Shalom and welcome to my weekly video message. I would love to share what I heard at a Fabring in a Hasidic gathering I attended on Zoom this week. But honestly, it would take me almost a week to do so because the Fabring actually lasted close to a week. For the last six days, close to 5,000 shluchim, the Rebbe's emissaries from around the world have been sitting and sharing words of inspiration, memories of the Rebbe and personal stories. The virtual Fabrengen started in Australia at the conclusion of Shabbat and was originally scheduled to last 24 hours as different time zones finished Shabbat and joined in. But it ultimately lasted 136 hours and at any given time there were 500 to 1,000 shluchim participating. While truthfully I wasn't able to be on as much as I wished I could, each time I zoomed in I learned something new and was reminded of our common goal the mission the Rebbe gave us to reveal the Neshama, the godly soul that exists within each and every Jew, and prepare the world for the coming of Mashiach. Okay, so I had a great time and it feels great to have been on a Zoom meeting that broke the world's record for the longest Zoom meeting to date. But what does that have to do with you? Several years ago, I had been visiting a man at the sunrise of Oltapan, who had his bar mitzvah in 1932 at a progressive synagogue in Nuremberg, Germany, but had, he had never put on tefillin. Each time I asked the man to consider the mitzvah, he adamantly refused, until one day I had brought my son Yossi along, and after doing a little juggling act, he asked the man to put on tefillin, and he immediately did. At age eight, Yossi put on the tefillin with 94-year-old Martin Hicks for the first time in his life. He was so touched that he said he would love to make it to Yossi's bar mitzvah. He really tried and continued doing this special mitzvah every week until he passed away at the age of 98, shortly before Yossi turned 13. But how was it that I was unable to convince him while my eight-year-old son was able to do so on his first try? Was it Yossi's smile? Was it his innocence? Perhaps. But years ago, I read a story that made a big impression on me. And I think it not only has the answer, but it also has a lesson for me and you. The story took place in 1950, soon after the previous Rebbe had passed away. The Rebbe was leading a Fabrengen at 770 Eastern Parkway. The Fabrengen had begun at 9 p.m. and it continued through the night. At 5 a.m., shortly before the conclusion of this Fabrengen, a college student turned up, took a cup of l'chaim, and approached the Rebbe for a blessing. The Rebbe asked the young man what he would like a blessing for, and the young man answered that he should be successful in his studies. The Rebbe then asked him for his name, and when he responded that his name is Irving, the Rebbe asked for his Hebrew name, but he didn't know it. So the Rebbe said, most commonly, Irving would be Yitzchak. But do you know who Yitzchak was? To which the young man responded, I've never learned Torah in my life, so I do not know. But I have heard that he was one of the patriarchs. Indeed, the Rebbe said to him, but what was unique about Yitzchak was that he would dig wells. The student was surprised. How was it that such an important man would do the digging? So the Rebbe explained it to him with a parable. What is the goal of digging? To find oil or water, etc. But in order to achieve this goal, one has to remove the earth or stones that are concealing it. Now, did the person digging bring the oil or water there? Of course not. God had created it. The person digging merely reveals that which is hidden in the ground. The same is true with our souls. Deep inside every Jew, regardless of who he is, there is an ashama, a godly soul which desires to serve God. But at times there are things that hide the light of one's neshama, not allowing it to motivate the body to act in accordance with the will of God. So what's the solution? To go digging, to remove the things that conceal the soul. And much like with oil and water, the godly soul has already been placed in our body by the Almighty. Our job is simply to reveal it. And then the Rebbe continued and said, Since your name is Yitzchak, your job is to dig wells. But Rebbe, I'm studying in college for a degree in engineering. 
I have no intention of becoming a well digger. I mean in the spiritual sense. You have to make an effort to reveal the godly soul in every Jew you meet. For example, since it's already morning when you leave and you will meet a Jewish man, you should ask him if he put on tefillin. And if he hasn't, then your job is to convince him to put on tefillin. Through that, you will do your job of digging wells, of revealing his godly soul. But Rebbe, I myself don't put on tefillin. How can I ask someone else to do it? The Rebbe's response to him was something I often think about. The Rebbe said, firstly, since you know that this is your shlichut, it's your mission to influence others to put on the tefillin, you could put it on yourself, and then you'll be able to ask others to do it. But secondly, God created us in such a way that we can only be influenced by certain people. If someone else tries to influence us, it simply won't work. And so the Rebbe said while pointing at himself and others around the table, if you have to influence a certain individual, I or so-and-so, will not succeed in doing it. The person has to be influenced by you, is waiting for you to talk to him. And so why is he guilty that you don't put on tefillin? This, I believe, is the reason Yossi was able to influence Martin Hicks to put on tefillin and not me. It's because he had the key to do it. It was his mission. As was evident on the 136 hour for Brengen this week, the Rebbe didn't just influence people. He inspired people with a mission to influence others, to dig and reveal the hidden treasure that can be found within each and every single Jew. But the Rebbe was clear that it wasn't only his shluchim, his emissaries, that he was charging with this mission because every Jew is ultimately a shliach, an emissary of God Almighty. You too are a shliach. You too have the power to help and inspire another Jew to zoom in to their neshama and come to appreciate their ultimate potential. I hope you're ready to go digging. I am. Shabbat Shalom.